Mark Romanek and you're watching Fishing 401. On this week's adventure, we're up at a place called Waterfalls Lodge. It's near Spanish Ontario. We're gonna go into a remote lake, chasing some smallmouth, stick around. It's gonna be a great adventure. There were several things that were really of interest to me when I decided we were going to come here. Um, for example, on our first day of our adventure, um, we were going to go smallmouth fishing, and Rob has these remote lakes that you can access only by quad. So he loads up our whole crew in a quad, and it was quite the adventure. About an hour long drive through some pretty rugged trails, but eventually we got to a beautiful lake. He had some boats stashed there, and the fishing was absolutely amazing. Today is going to be all about brown bass. <laughs> you gotta love bass, I tell you what. Just hooked up on my first smolly dad. <laughs> There's a nice smallmouth. They're so pretty up here in these northern lakes, so dark. But I tell you what, you can see from the video how much of an adventure it was just getting out here. It's about an hour ATV ride down these pretty rugged trails to get to this remote lake, and we were told it has world-class smallmouth fishing. So we're gonna get this one back, and we're gonna go see if we can catch bigger ones, but this lake is known for a lot of fish and producing quality fish, so we're gonna see what happens. We're at a place near Spanish Ontario. It's called Waterfalls Lodge, and what attracted us to this place is that they've got a lot of unique opportunities here. You can bring your own boat, and you can fish their lakes. Uh, they have four lakes that are connected right there to the lodge. Um, you can use their boats if you like. They've got these 16-foot Starcraft boats with 25-horse uh, motors on them that are really set up nice. You can fish those as well. And then they have these remote lakes like we're at today where you use UTVs to get in. They've got these remote lakes that you can fish as well. And on top of all that, they're very close to Lake Huron here in an area known as the Whaleback, which is world famous for producing smallmouth and walleye and muskie. So there's lots and lots of opportunities here. Uh, we're only here for a few days. We won't have any chance of fishing all of that opportunity, uh, but we're gonna do our best to see if we can explore as much as possible. You know, today's all gonna be about talking about different smallmouth tactics. Wow, boy, this is a big fish, whatever it is. And we're just getting set up today, so I don't really know, you know, the lay of the land or anything. But smallmouth are known for fighting, and if this is a smallmouth, this is a good one. Oh man, there's also a lot of pike in this lake too, so really no telling what it is, especially how we've never fished this body of water before. And we just kind of got out here and played, but oh man, it's a stud. That is a great fish. They're so pretty. And I don't know of a fish that fights harder than these big smallmouth like this. Yeah. There we go. It's a better fish, Dad. 
That's what we're looking for, kid. Nice looking smallmo. I caught that one with a drop shot. And we're gonna keep messing around today, changing things up. We caught a couple of jigs, just started off right away. And this is with the drop shot. You know, just your normal bass tactics that you'd use to come out and catch smallmouth. And since we've never been here before, we brought a lot of gear. And the plan is to fish a lot of different tackle to figure these fish out. Well, we're traveling with a group of guys from Jay's Sporting Goods. And every year we try to get those guys out on at least one fishing adventure. And we've done different things over the years. You know, we've taken them, you know, for uh, things like brook trout, but we've never done a smallmouth trip with them. And uh, leading up the group there is Brian Darlin, and uh, he is the store manager at the Claire store, and he is quite the smallmouth fisherman. So, <laughs> so we picked Brian right out and said, boy, you're going, we need your expertise. And he has been a great asset in helping us figure out these smallmouth very, very fast. There's another one. This is a little bit better fish that I think. I don't believe we got a landing net in this boat. I think you're gonna lift this puppy. Oh, I think I can maybe just alley oop him, Dad. Oh, he's not that big. That's a good looking fish. Though. They just got some good shoulders on him. They sure fight hard. It's so much fun fishing new bodies of water. You know, like I said earlier today, we've never fished this lake before. So all of the structure that we're fishing is all new to us. We're using our electronics and driving around, trying to figure out and map this lake and understand where these fish are. And during the process of trying to figure it out, we're catching these fish in between. We're gonna get this one right back and try to get another one. Additional considerations provided by Motor Guide, engineered for anglers. Additional considerations provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait suds. I missed one on the glide bait, Dad. Man, he pumped it. Well, at least I know they're gonna bite it. <laughs> he came back and got it. This isn't a very big one. It was just a little bit different presentation. Because we're learning this lake, I just wanna keep trying all these different ideas. We know we're gonna come to this lake now for, for quite a while, so we've been putting a whole bunch of different lures in our tackle box in excitement for coming here and getting to try it. This is just a glide bait. Uh, this one's called a shiver minnow. Uh, something like a jigging wrap. Just kind of jumps around down there on the rocks. And these fish are feeding on crayfish down there. So it acts a lot like that. But that one's, you know, not very big. But at least we know we'll bite it. Well, if you're looking to do a trip like this, timing is going to be important. Um, we've timed this specifically to come up here in August. And the reason we wanted to be a little later in the season is we wanted the water to warm up and we wanted these smallmouth to drop off the edges and get down in deeper water. And the reason for that is we can use sonar to find them. Uh, sonar is a very effective tool for finding fish, but it's not so effective when the fish are in three, four, five, six feet of water. When they get out 10 to 20, 30 feet of water, your sonar is carrying you know, a wider signal, you're seeing more of the bottom, and it's much easier to find fish. So August is an excellent month. September is also an excellent month as well. So those two months are going to be your prime time for coming up here and targeting these, I'll call them rock smallmouth, because all of these fish are on hard bottom, they're all on rock. They're so pretty too, Dad. And you see just that dark color that's something that we don't get to see at home you know we don't get to see smallmouth that dark you know so far we've caught just a stupid number of smallmouth most of them have been relatively small in that pound pound and a half range um, if a guy was to come up here and think he's going to get big smallmouth i think you can um, but i don't think that you're going to be able to get consistent numbers of big smallmouth so you're going to have to sort through these small fish and work hard towards finding big fish and that's kind of what we're doing now and that's why we're so aggressive that's why we're moving so fast, we're not staying in any area. We are just keep looking for that one pod of bigger fish. When we find them, the way these fish are biting, I have no, no doubt in my mind, we're gonna catch them. <laughs> Dad, you know what I like most about catching these smallmouth? What's that? You know, I'm a walleye guy, right? So when you feel a tick in your line and you're a walleye fisherman, you better be setting the hook quick, otherwise that walleye's dropping it. And I'm having just a blast, feeling that tick reeling down and just setting the hook, you know? It's something I don't get to do a lot of, but it <laughs> gets your heart pounding. And these fish fight a little bit harder than walleyes, too, I'm man. I'm thinking you're right. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit harder than walleye. Let's swing them up here. Whoa. Another, another nice fish. You know, we're not catching giants, but those are quality smallmouth. I mean, they're fighting hard, and, and they're good thick in the shoulders. 
gonna get this one back right away. Whoa, gave me a splash and she's gone. You know, if we had the luxury of fishing in our StarCraft XDX 2050, we'd have an electric motor and we'd be doing this a little bit differently. We'd have that electric motor in the water and we'd be moving along the structure and covering water pretty quickly with the electric motor, uh, finding fish and then trying to target those fish that we've uh, located. Well, in these remote lakes, obviously, we don't have the nature of a big boat, and we certainly don't have an electric motor. But what we do have is a gasoline kicker motor, and that gasoline kicker motor works very well because we can idle it down really slow. And normally what I like to do is put the back of the boat into the wind and kind of just slowly slide along and let the wind slow us down a little bit. Um, it's called back trolling. It's really effective with walleyes, um, and walleye fishermen live and die by back trolling, but bass guys uh, usually have the luxury of an electric motor. But if you come up here, you're going to have to do a little bit of back trolling because it's the only effective way to get these boats down to slow enough speeds so that you can cruise along the shorelines and look for fish. We've seen a little bit of everything in this wonderful little lake. Whoa, a jumper. My goodness, if we had a day of smallmouth fishing. Just a little bit of everything. I think he's gonna jump, there he goes. Gotten into a little bit higher quality fish here as of late, and that's always a good thing. I like to see those nicer fish. We've paid our dues today. Come here, Mr. Guy. One more leap, you had. There we go. Very nice smallmouth. Very nice. <laughs> hey, my name is Mark Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 401. Hope you had a lot of fun watching us just harass a ton of smallmouth bass. Man, oh man, oh man. Get yourself up here in Algoma Country, Waterfalls Lodge. Get yourself some bass. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Hey, I'm Mark Romanak with Fishing 411 Television. Over the years, I've owned a number of Evinrude E-Tech engines, and I've loved all of them. Recently, I had an opportunity to step up and go to their second generation, the G2. One of the things I like special about the G2 is the digital dash display that it has. It gives me all the information I need as a fisherman to know my engine's running at peak performance. Now there's a lot of different screens on these gauges that you can use, but the one I use the most is miles per gallon. When I'm fishing and I'm running across the lake at full RPM, I like to see how much fuel I'm burning, and I can see exactly what my miles per gallon are based on my speed, my RPM, and my trim percentage. By adjusting those variables, I can get my maximum miles per gallon. Why is that important to me? It saves me money. Every day on the water while I'm fishing, I dial my engine into the point where I'm saving money, not burning any extra gas than I absolutely have to. We used the quads to get into remote lakes on the first day, and we decided on the second day we wanted to do something a little bit different. We brought our own fishing boats up, and so not very far from here is Lake Huron. It's an area called the Whaleback, um, and actually there's a big municipal marina right in Spanish. So we lodged our boats there, and then we went out into this Whaleback region, and what it is, it's kind of a series of islands that kind of separated off from Lake Huron, and so even though it's part of Lake Huron, it's very well protected, um, and it's really, really good smallmouth fishing. Oh, Dad, I'm hooked up with our first fish of the day. That was very, very much looked like smallmouth water. We had a, a little rock edge there, and it dropped off, and at the bottom of it, 
we marked some weeds on the graph and I dropped down in there and we're pulling up this pretty decent smallmouth dad. Very decent smallmouth so. Oh, oh he's baby. jumping. Got a, little, got a little jump out of him. I don't know if you've got enough room to swing in my direction, but I can probably help you a little bit with the net if he comes this way. Oh. Whoa. Whoa, you see that? That was nice. You didn't like that. You didn't like that at all. <laughs> Give this one a try. Maybe you get him that time. There, there we go. go. He gave me a second chance. Beautiful fish, Jeepers. Beautiful fish. You know, that's not a giant smallmouth. I'd expect to catch much bigger fish today, but that's still a great fish to start the day off with. That fish came off just a rock lip, and that's kind of what we're looking for here. In this area, there's some isolated weed structure along with some rock structure, and we're gonna try to pick apart this structure and find these fish, just like this one. Hopefully there's a little bit bigger ones living in here. We're gonna get this one back right away. You know, one of the things that struck me about the whaleback region is the lack of fishing pressure. Uh, if you see a boat in the whaleback region, it's probably a sailboat. Um, there were lots of sailboats and there were lots of cruisers that were anchored up and people just enjoying the weather and enjoying the beautiful scenery. There were very few fishermen. Um, and to me, that's a cool thing because, you know, where you find places where there's low fishing pressure, you're probably going to find very good fishing. Let me try to get an air freight out. There you go. There we go. Very cool. <laughs> Doing a one hand thing here. Yeah, let me see if I can get that out of there. Nice fish. Well, like I started to say, um, weeds are important for bass fishing, no doubt about it, but weeds aren't structure. Weeds are cover. And when you find structure, which is the bottom, combined with weeds, you've got a dynamite pattern for bass. And uh, there's another little thing that's going on here. This is the middle of summertime and the water's warm and there's not a lot of oxygen. So when you find pockets of weeds, weeds give off oxygen in the water. And that also tends to concentrate the fish. So if you're targeting smallmouth, you definitely want to target them in the weeds. What a good looking fish that is. Dad, I think you got me beat. Yours is a little bit bigger than mine, but we caught two fish in the same area and that's kind of what we're looking for today. Let me get this one back. I'll explain more about it. You know, smallmouth are fish that, that tend to group up together and we're casting this huge area. But when we find one, we slow the boat down and really pick apart those areas. If you catch one, you take the time to pick apart that area that you just caught that one in, there's a good chance you're gonna catch another one and maybe another one. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Of course, we're catching our fish on soft plastics, and uh, no surprises there, every bass fisherman in America uses soft plastic, um, but it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. Um, we love soft plastics because they catch a lot of fish, no question about them, um, but they're so delicate that they tear easily. And, uh, and so you go through a lot of soft plastic and you're constantly managing your soft plastic to re-rig it on the hook to make it look right. And uh, sometimes when it gets tore up a little bit, it'll slide down on the hook, it bunches up on the hook, and it doesn't look just perfect. And in fact, it doesn't have the right action and you don't get bit. So you're constantly dealing with this plastic all the time. Um, some people might say, well, why don't they just make these plastics a little bit more durable? <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, durable plastics are out there, but they don't have that soft, natural accident and they don't seem to catch as many fish. So you can't have your cake and eat it too in this situation. You want the softest plastic you can get, it's gonna get you the most bites. You just have to stock up on it because you're gonna go through a lot of plastic on a good bass bite. Drop shotting like we've been doing a lot of today, it requires using plastics and there's so many different kinds of plastics out there to catch smallmouth. But the three we've been using today are three very different plastics. The very first plastic that we're using has more of a paddle tail and it looks a lot like a minnow. It has that paddle tail. There's a lot of thump, a lot of vibration in the water caused by this more of an aggressive plastic. The second plastic we've been using a lot, I would consider more like a finesse minnow. It has a split tail, very, very realistic, looking identical to a minnow. Now the third presentation and the third plastic we've been using are these stick worms. And they come in different sizes, but we're using the smaller size today, hooking it up onto our drop shot rig. Between these three plastics, we've been able to catch these quality smallmouth. But like I said before, there are endless possibilities when it comes to fishing plastics on your drop shot rig. It's always nice to come back to reality. Let's see if I can get this guy to come in here. Come on here. Not a bad fish. Not a bad fish at all. <laughs> I'm just amazed at how well these fish fight. Certainly not the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught, but some of the scrappiest and best looking. And look at this scenery. It's God's country. Beautiful. All right, big guy. Back you go. 
You ever been fishing down a shoreline with an electric motor, you kind of just pound in the bank and you catch a fish and you get all excited and you're fighting that fish and by the time you actually land it, you look up and realize that you've drifted like 100 feet. You're nowhere as close to where you caught that fish. Well, what we're doing today, we've got an XI-5, uh, it's a motor guide product on here, and it's got a feature on it so that we can just put it on continuous, go down the shoreline, that's what we've been doing. And then when I hit a fish, and I'm fighting that fish, I just reach over one little button on the foot pedal, or you can use the key fob, hit that anchoring button, and bam, that motor just stops right there, and you just hover right in place, you stay right there. And what it does is it sets you up so you're in perfect position. If you want to cast again into that spot, you're right there, and you can do it again. Otherwise, if you're using a traditional electric motor, Lord knows how far off your spot you're going to be by the time you land that fish. Locking down and staying on that one spot is deadly, deadly. Um, I can't emphasize enough how much we use this feature. It's a great feature in an electric motor. This is a much better fish. And this is a classic example of what I was just talking about. I just caught a fish here, put the electric motor in stop or anchor mode, cast back in there again and I get another bite and look what I got here. <laughs> Definitely not a, not a smallmouth. What a quality fish. I love it, man. I'm the walleye guy. Wherever I go, they follow me. Hey, that's dinner, Dad. I want to net that one for you. <laughs> you can net it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they like hanging out with smallmouth. Walleyes on a drop shot. <laughs> man, we've had just a great day catching these smallmouth. And these things just do not give up with their fights. Oh, get him, Dad. What a fish. Wow. What a stud of a smallmouth. That thing is thick in the shoulders, chunky, and man, did it put up a good fight. Hey, my name's Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 411. If you get a chance, come check out the whaleback region in Algoma country. You will be glad you did. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Dad, I'm going to need a picture of this one. Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Avonroot Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Smooth moves, smooth your ride. Precision trolling data. The Troller's Bible now available in an app. Well, you know, definitely not the biggest mom off I've ever caught.